Hey guys, thank you for stopping by my channel. If you like the videos, then make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. If you want to leave any feedback, that's always appreciated down in the comments. And if you want to keep up with this series as well as my other projects, then go ahead and join our Discord, which is on the screen. Take care, nerds. Now on to the video. Hey guys, welcome to episode 11 of my Discord JS series. It has been quite a while since I've done a recording, but I have been quite busy with other projects and I haven't, still haven't really been able to dedicate as much time as I would like to doing YouTube videos, but it's something I'm still working on. It's something I still definitely want to do more. So do expect future videos and hopefully I can fall into an actual upload schedule that I can stick to and you guys can see content from there on out. So today's episode, we're going to start building the bot now to scale more. So scale as in the bot being multiple servers, doing multiple things. And by doing that, it's time to think about databases. So to keep it short and sweet, as I'm not going to go too much into that, as at this point, you should have some idea of what a database is. If you might have heard of MySQL or SQLite. Um, there's also like GraphQL, MongoDB, those are different examples of database. Now the thing about MongoDB is it's NoSQL in a sense as instead of a database including tables, it has collections in this case. Instead of rows and columns, you'll have fields and documents. So that's kind of the gist of how a MongoDB database looks. And we're going to dive into that and set things up in this video. And to interact with MongoDB, your MongoDB database, we're going to use a node package called Mongoose. Mongoose is a MongoDB object modeling tool designed to work in the asynchronous environment. There are other packages that you can use. For example, there's the MongoDB package which I've used a little bit, but I've kind of geared more towards using Mongoose and not using other applications outside of Discord bots. So over here is the MongoDB website and you're going to have to come here to get two, to get two things so you can start working with your database. First off, you're going to have to download the MongoDB community server on your machine. Whether it's going to be on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can choose your operating system from here. In this case, I'm running on Windows, so I would download Windows. However, I already have MongoDB and this community server installed, so I'm not going to run that again. But we're going to be using this here to host the database localhost as we're just developing the bot. But in the future, when you're getting ready to run the bot publicly, you're going to want to look into different options to host your database. So for example, there's MongoDB Cloud, which you can look at to host your database. They have a free 512 megabyte server um, database. You can also consider going with MLab, which is another um, database as a service based around MongoDB. And you can also buy VPS from Vulture or DigitalOcean and you can host your database on there. However, I'm not gonna go into that until a couple episodes down the road where we talk about hosting your bot and databases and, and stuff like that. But you're gonna go ahead and download MongoDB community server and you're gonna run through that process and it's gonna install and have all those files. And then after you do that, you'll actually have a MongoDB server running on your computer, which you're going to need in this case as you're gonna be connecting to localhost. And it's recommended as you're developing on localhost so it makes sense to install an instance of a MongoDB server on your computer. And then another thing which isn't required, but I highly recommend is downloading MongoDB Compass. You can visualize and kind of see what's going on with your data in Mongo, in your MongoDB databases and collections, as well as modify your data and such as well. So it's a really nice GUL versus using a CLI, which I've used a bit, but I really don't use a lot. I've geared towards MongoDB Compass. But don't mistake, in, don't mistake MongoDB Compass for MongoDB database. Compass is in the name. A compass points you towards something. It gives you directions, but it's not exactly giving you what you fully need. That's why you're going to want to make sure you have the MongoDB community server downloaded on your machine. So after we get all that 
out of the way, let's hop into Visual Studio so we can do the first thing, which is installing Mongo Mongoose. Now, I did quite a few things already. Um, I set up the models folder and utils folder, and we're gonna talk about that. And I'll go in depth with that for a bit. Also, as usual, I'll leave resources in the description about modules and exporting different modules, functions, variables throughout your code. But I did that here just to separate things in the code and not put a whole bunch of things in your code all in one file, which can make things very messy. And it just helps for readability, scalability of your code. So first things first is you now have installed Mongoose. And the first thing you need to do is you're gonna set up a connection, make sure the, your bot can connect to the database where you're running and such. So that's where we're gonna look at the first util, the first um, util file in the utils folder here, Mongoose. So similar to how your, your command handler and video handler works, we're using module that exports as you see here in app.js. We're just iterating through each of the files, each of the commands, each of the events, and it's binding to that. And if you look at the message event, you'll see that it's just cmd.run client message args. And these are all the three parameters exported from the command file, passed through into the command file. So that's, you know, how that works. You have client being passed through, message being passed through, and the args being passed through. So just to give you an idea of why how that works and then we have an init function which we're going to use when the bot starts up right after like right before the, the bot logs in we'll init the database connection that way and we have a couple things going on here which i'm going to go ahead and explain this video is going to be more of setting up the server setting up mongoose and explaining things and then the next episode we're actually going to be doing stuff with the code such as creating and deleting guild settings for like when the bot joins the server. So that's what we're doing in this episode because I want you guys to get a proper understanding of how this all functions or works together, why I have the files and functions spread out and what my reasoning for that. So going forward, you know where everything is. You can easily import settings and such in different functions throughout your files. So first we have an object here called DB options. And if you go ahead over to the mongoose documentation, you'll see that there are different options that you can pass through the connect parameter. As you see right here, use new URL parser true. So if you go read the docs and go to connection, might have to take a moment to find this guys give me a moment to find this okay here's what i was looking for so here we have the options the connect method also accepts an options object which will be passed on to the underlying mongodb driver so here you can see a full list of what all the different options do and the how this connects with like the normal like these are the options I use by default whenever I set up Mongoose into a new application slash Discord bot of mine. So I'll link this in the description, this specific page. Well, actually I'll link the documentation in general and basically all you have to do is go to connections and scroll down to connection string options. And you'll see this section right here. But here we just have a list of different. So new URL parser, make sure it can use this new URL right here. Reconnect tries, it'll keep reconnecting as many times as possible every 500 milliseconds. And the connection timeout will be around 10 seconds. So these different options here. Then we pass with the options here and the connection string being the first parameter here. So whenever you're connected to a Mongo DB server, you're going to be using connection parameters such as mongodb colon forward slash forward slash. Sometimes you might see mongodb plus srv, which that's also a record that you can use sometimes. You might see that, for example, with mongodb atlas. I might show a screenshot of that connection string, for example. 
Then we have use find and modified. Can we set this to false? This is an old um, method used on the model and it's not used anymore. So I set this to false because I used to have errors. I just never really actually went over this again. I just always have had this throughout the past several months. And then mongoose.promise, global promise. This allows you to just use promises globally throughout your bot. And then we have a few different events, which we can go check out here, connection events. And these are just the different connection events you can use using Node.js's Node Event Emitter class. So whenever the, there's Whenever the bot is connected to the Mongo's, MongoDB server, you have this being fired. Whenever there's error, this is being fired. And when the bot disconnects from the MongoDB database, this is fired. So this is what we have in here. And we have in this object, and we have a property here called init, which is a function. And this will go ahead and connect the bot. So that's what we have going on in here. So we're gonna have to do two things in here. One thing here actually. And we're just gonna do client.mongoose. And we're gonna require that mongoose file from the utils folder. Then we're going to client.mongoose and you'll see Client mongoose utils mongoose. Client mongoose in it, and that will fire this function. And we can go ahead and give that a go to make sure I didn't screw up. <laughs> so give this a few moments to start up. So there we go. Mongoose connection successfully opened. We are all good. And once right now, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the local host. Make sure that your MongoDB server on localhost is running or you will have an issue connecting to your database. So let's give that a moment. So here's all the databases I have so far on my computer. And the database name that I have set up in the connection string is Lincoln. You can call this connection string or database, whatever you want. Also for future reference, I am gonna be putting this connection string in my .env file in the future or probably like required through the config so this will change but it will reference to this string in the .env file so that's the first thing that we're going to want to do now what are we going to be doing with mongodb what's the first step well we're going to be creating a new model and that model is where we're going to store all the information that we can be used in the model. So the guild ID, guild name, mod, different staff roles, such as a mod role and the admin role. We can store the prefix, a welcome channel, a welcome message. This will all be stored in the schema. So I'll show you an example of a schema on the screen right now. You can see how that looks. And I'll show you how this sets up. So here we're gonna require Mongoose and then we're going to create a new object as a schema. So we're going to access the schema, the schema function here for the schema const constructor on Mongoose. And here we'll pass through all the different properties that we can use to the, for this schema. Then we're going to export that schema with mongoose.model. And then we're going to give that model a name and then we're going to pass through the schema that we created here and that's how that's going to work and when we do for, for example on guild create or guild delete it'll call from that schema we're we'll actually be doing something a little bit different because we have a functions file here here we're going to be creating a few different functions get guild update deal guild and create guild get guild will get the settings for a specific guild in a database, if they exist. Update guild will update specific settings in the guild and create guild will create a new guild in the settings, in the database. And again, next episode, I'll be showing you how to do all that. 
But those are the functions that we have now, and they will expand in the future. But again, I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're working with here. So another thing is we're also going to be having the default settings that are going to be applied to the schema whenever the database starts. So other than you know, guild ID, guild name, and, and such, we want to set a default prefix, mod role, admin role, welcome message. And I'm going to have a new object in here called default settings. And we'll store things in here such as the prefix. And we'll have the welcome channel, welcome message, mod role, admin role, etc. So just some default settings that we can use with the schema. This might change in the next episode, but just giving you an idea of where we're gonna be pulling the default settings from. And how this is gonna work is in the functions command, when we do the create guild, we're actually gonna merge the default settings with the information provided in the schema. So it automatically fills up all the information. So that's what we have going on for this episode. Again, I just wanted to make sure that we go over Mongoose and how we're going to implement this in the code and just give you an overview. And next episode, we'll implement it with the events, guild create, guild delete. We'll set up a command so settings can be updated. I'll show you how you can use per guild prefixes and such in the message event, per guild welcome messages, and a guild member add, stuff like that. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode as I covered everything I wanted to regarding MongoDB. And make sure you guys come back to the next episode where we'll go ahead and put this all into action so you can start scaling your bot. Take care, nerds. Peace.